Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Let's start working on the neck now. Um, there are a couple of things we need to consider here, and one is this huge underneath part of the chin. Most characters don't really have this, but I think to do that, what we're going to need to do is select these edges here and actually extrude them back to meet up with this part of the neck. Now, I may want to even extend it to here and extrude these down. So let's try this. I will hit E and extrude and move this in like this. And let's take this point and move it back here and move it down underneath. See if that'll work. And this as well, we're going to want this to be underneath here, like this. So now let's go to our default view and take a look at this. Yeah, so we're beginning to get that kind of underneath part um, of the chin. So I think we could probably just move that back to where the neck begins and we'll be good. All right, let's try it. So I'm going to take this point and move it right back to here. And these points can probably move around like this. So we look like that. Let's give that a try. Now, the trick is going to be connecting all this up. It looks to me like this edge right here is going to be able to come down and connect with this. And it looks like that this edge is going to be able to connect to that. So let's give that a try. I will first select these edges. I'll select that one and then control click this one. And I'll hit E and extrude down here. I'll pull this out in the front view some. And then let's start connecting these up. I think, let's try this. We can select these two and press Alt M and choose at last. Now the question is going to be, do we want to connect this to this? Or do we want to extrude down one more time and then connect it? Interesting question. But I think what I'm going to do is Go ahead and connect this up and let's see how it works. So I'm going to select this point and this point and I'll press Alt M and choose at center and that will bring them together like that. Now let's go back here and I need to adjust these. So instead of having it come down like that, I'll have this kind of edge come out like this. I'll go ahead and bring these down a bit and there we go. So what I've done is I've basically connected, I extruded these two edges back and then I connected these two edges up. So if we go to face mode and I alt click an edge between two faces, you can see it is a loop and that's kind of what we want. We want these kinds of loops going around the face like this. So that's really just kind of another loop on up around the top of the head and underneath the chin. All right, so we've got these edges now. What we're going to do is just select this entire edge loop all the way around the neck and we're going to extrude this down. So I'll just hit E and extrude and bring this all the way down. Now we're going to need to flatten it in the Z, so I'll press S and Z and scale it in the Z a bit. I'll rotate it back. We're going to need to scale it in the Y as well, so S and Y and scale it in the Y some. Rotate that back down so it's beginning to fit around the neck there. And we're also going to need to scale this in the X as well here. So I'll just select an edge here and move the cursor to it. Cursor to selected. Change the pivot point to the cursor with the period key. Select this edge and press S and X and scale it out in the X. Okay, so now we're getting there. Let's take a look at it over here. And smooth it. Okay, we're beginning to get a neck, a very thick, wide neck. But one of the things I need to think about is how many 
edges, how much geometry we're going to have as this head continues down into the torso because there is really no break in the model from the head down into the torso. We could hide a break in the model underneath his green part here, this green part of the costume. We could hide it under there. But even so, this is still a very smooth, continuous area. So we're going to have to extrude these edges on down into the torso. And in doing that, we need to think about how much geometry is going to be here for us to work with. And right now, we've really only got two edges. You know, we've got this and this, and that's about it going down into the chest. We should probably insert a few edge loops in here so we'll have enough geometry, kind of like back here, for the front of the character. But when we do that, we're going to destroy our nice, pretty smooth curves because it's easier to have smooth curves when you have fewer points. So as soon as we insert some edges in here, it's going to destroy that. But with a little bit of work, we can fix it up and smooth it back out so it isn't terrible. So let's work on that real quick. I'm going to turn the subdivision surface modifier off. And I will go ahead and press Control R. And I think I'm going to insert two edges right here. Like that. And then I think I'm going to insert one right back here. Like this. So now that gives us some extra geometry right you can see in here to kind of match what's going on in the back. However, when we turn on the subdivision surface modifier again, we get that. So you see how it's kind of flattened it out some. And that's not exactly what we want. So I'm just going to take maybe this face and I'll try and just move it out just a little bit to kind of curve that some. And there's going to be more I'm going to need to do in here. You can see how this is pulling some. You can see how this flattened up over here. We could probably take this edge and move it out a bit. Round that off. Maybe move this in. And begin to kind of round that off again. Uh, but it still needs some work. So one thing you can do after you've inserted these edge loops like this is you can use the sculpt tool. So if you come over here to the sculpt mode in the interaction menu here, and then you click on the sculpt icon here, you can see the different sculpt brushes. And right here is smooth. Now if we use this, I'm gonna take the strength down to maybe 0.3 or so, something like that. I'll hit the F key to increase the size of the brush. And now you can come in here and just click and begin smoothing some of this up a bit. So it just looks a little bit more rounded and cartoony again. Maybe I'll reduce the brush size again. And then you can just click and try and smooth it up again. And as you can see, there's more to do. I'm going to do a little bit more point pulling, but just using that sculpt smooth tool has helped get me 80 or 90% of the way there. All right, so let's just begin on the torso now. I'm going to move some of these points around just to try kind of get them more evenly spaced around the neck. Something like this. All right, so I'll go back to my character screen layout, disable the subdivision surface modifier for a minute. I'm going to Alt-click this edge. I'll hit E to extrude and pull this down just a hair. I will scale it in the Y, press S, Y, scale that out in the Y a bit, like so. And then I'll come over here and scale it in the X. I'll press the period key to move the pivot point and press S and X and scale it out in the X, like that. And there we go. So we've got the beginnings of that shoulder going down into the torso. All right, we're coming along, but I don't think we should continue down into the torso quite yet. I think what we need to do is come back and deal with the eyes and the inside of the mouth and the teeth, mainly because we still have access to the inside of the head here. Um, if we continue down with the torso, it'll be hard to get back up in there. 
So I think for the next video, we're going to begin working on the eyes and the mouth. So take care. I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles Render Engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program GIMP to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.